It's the John and Ken Show. John Cobell and Ken Shampoo. KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. Well, you know, we're here to give you the truth. No matter what happens, uh, a lot of the mainstream media, particularly like TV, sometimes newspapers, are very superficial about the way they cover stuff. And, of course, they, they willingly report lies over and over again because they don't bother to check to see if anything's true or not. They don't care. Now, the commercial campaign last fall for Prop 30 was trying to convince people it's all for the children. And don't worry, there's like a lockbox and all the tax increase money will go to the schools. And we told you not to believe that. Re- it's still passed. Remember they had, uh, they had the, uh, the controller, John Chung? He went on a TV commercial and said the Sacramento politicians can't touch the money. It was all going to be protected for the schools? But we told you it's a pool of money. There's no way that they can take the sales tax increase money, the income tax increase money, separate it out, put it in a lockbox, and make sure. And by the way, if it goes to schools, well, most of the schools are teachers and would be pensions, right? Right. Well, it turns out that although the new budget that Jerry Brown is proposing, which, of course, contains 6 to $7 billion in additional revenue from Prop 30, apparently only half is going to go to the schools. In, remember, there weren't going to be any cuts because he increased spending this year by $6 billion to match the $6 billion in tax increases. If there was no $6 billion tax increase, they would have spent exactly the same money in the coming fiscal year as last year. So there would not have been any cuts. That was a lie. It was fictitious. And what really pisses me off is now Jerry Brown is getting his uh, his body lathered up by a bunch of columnists who say, wow, what a great leader he is. You know, he should be president. He's Look an what oracle. He's accomplished. It's like he's, he's a wizard. Stupid bootlickers. He lied to the public effectively. The public bought the lie. That's not a leader. That's a crook. Well, that's that. That's uh, that's that's Richard Nixon here. This Union Tribune story says that the budget he unveiled includes at least one point three billion dollars for state workers. Wow. It says here the added state worker benefits would come in two forms. Workers would stop taking furlough days once a month. And then the budget included another half million dollars for previously negotiated raises and health care benefit increases. Well, how about that? You know, they got deferred due to the fiscal crisis, but the day of reckoning is already here, so, and they're going to start giving them back. Oh, uh, So there's more pay and more health care benefits for state workers because of Prop 30. You voted them a raise. You voted them a raise. Why the, did you do that? And the news gets worse. Brown's proposed $98 billion general fund budget assumes no state employee raises beyond those already required. However, contracts for all but two of the state's 21 bargaining units are going to expire by July 2nd. And the legislature now has a supermajority of labor-friendly Democrats. Can you imagine what's coming this summer? Well, so there's not going to be any surplus. Oh, we owe them so much. They've suffered during this recession. What can we do for you? They'll be standing there naked with the union goons in front of them. Oh, oh, the state workers are going to get big raises. And then you're going to say, "Uh uh-oh, we don't have a surplus anymore. The budget's not balanced anymore. What happened? What do you think Brown is going to is going to veto the raises? It's going to be ugly. Now, credit the L.A. Times in this story. I hate to say it, but it's true. Governor Jerry Brown proclaimed last month or last week that California, which now has enough cash to pay its day to day bills, can no longer be described by naysayers as a failed state. Next paragraph. Even though it appears to be free of the deficit that dogged the capital in recent years, though, the state is no model of financial health. This is something we talked about last fall. A report came out about what kind of state debt was out there, and California was way ahead of the rest of the country in what they call long-term debt. Sacramento is legally obligated to pay many billions of dollars withheld from schools, local governments, and health care providers, and it has accumulated a crushing load of debt for retiree pensions and health care, now totaling more than taxpayers spend each year on all state programs combined. This is still... A- this is hundreds of billions of dollars of long-term debt. Don't confuse the year-to-year budget deficit, which now supposedly is zero, with our long-term debt obligations. Yeah. He, he, first of all, he's lying. There will be a deficit. There always is. Once all the raises kick in in July, you'll see. And they always miscalculate. They always lie. They write things down on paper that are known lies. In fact, every year, the legislature votes 
on a balanced budget. On paper, it's always balanced. That's required by law. So they declare it balanced even when it's way out of whack. And this year is no different. He's full of crap. He's lying. And they just keep reprinting and rebroadcasting his lies. This massive amount of debt just can't be dug out from. A failed state? The only reason they might be approaching a temporary uh, balance of the budget is because they jacked up the taxes higher than any other state in the nation, and we were already number one in most categories. Now, here's another great part of the story. Lawmakers have taken no action to fill the gaps with this long-term debt problem. State employees on the payroll, 10 years or more, are guaranteed insurance coverage for life, a benefit bestowed decades ago before the cost of medical care exploded. Now the state is facing a bill of $62.1 billion for those employees over the next 30 years. Sacramento has set mo- no money aside to cover these payments, and the tab grows Every year. See, when you talk about a budget deficit, that's just year-to-year operations. They don't take a look at what they're going to owe the retired employees five years, ten years, twenty years down the road. That's pushed aside and ignored. But as this article points out, it's growing. It's humongous. And it's all for government workers. Tens of billions of dollars in benefits for government workers. The state's Uh, borrowing from Wall Street in recent years also comes at a cost. According to the state treasurer's office, it'll cost $2,559 for every Californian to pay that back. Texas, 588 bucks of debt per resident. Another great example. We have have almost five times the debt of Texas per person. It's shockingly bad. So if anybody calls California anything but a failed state, and if there's one more writer that starts greasing up Jerry Brown's knob... Oh, mm. yeah. I, I mean, I, I can't Must even you. see straight when I read this crap. They're just, they ought to know better. Are they lying or are they stupid? When George Skelton writes his columns for the L.A. Times, uh, rubbing up uh, Brown, is he lying or is he stupid? One of the two. Or is it both? All right. The Department of Motor Vehicles here in California wants you to know that their latest study finds unlicensed drivers in California are nearly three times as likely to cause a fatal crash as people with licenses. So their answer, license the illegal immigrants. We'll talk about it.